I am presenting our work on dynamic vulnerability detection on smart contracts using machine learning. The authors are me, Mushtaba Ishqi, Cyril Artho, and Dilian Gorov from the TCS department of KTH Royal Institute of Technology. The Ethereum smart contracts encode rules to transfer the assets on the blockchain. The transfer of these assets happens using the transactions that execute on the blockchain platform we're using. And here we use Ethereum. The smart contracts uh, on the Ethereum, uh, we can build them using the Solidity programming language. The smart contracts, like any other um, program, or a piece of code, they can have vulnerabilities and, they, it, and that can be uh, exploited. And in fact, uh, a famous attack on Ethereum in 2016 called uh, attack on DAO uh, caused loss of 3.5 million Ether. The root cause of this attack uh, was reentrancy vulnerability. But what is uh, the reentrancy vulnerability? The reentrancy vulnerability is actually the uh, unintended recursive call of the same function over and over until something bad happens. Uh, for instance, stealing of uh, ether or some kind, some other kind of asset. And the example we have here, we have two smart contracts: smart contract A and B. Smart contract A is the victim here. Uh, the smart contract B starts the attack by calling its own function, which also calls a function called donate in the smart contract A. The donate function tries to donate or just send uh, some specific amount of ether to the smart contract B. Uh, but since the smart contract B has no specific function for this purpose, uh, after uh, receiving the ether, it uh, automatically, the fallback function of this function is going to be invoked. But in the fallback function, there is uh, an attack. The fallback function, because the fall fallback function recursively calls, again, calls the donate function. And if the smart contract A does, uh, does not contain enough checks and proper uh, checks uh, in its code, uh, something bad may happen here. And uh, this, this uh, the two and the two and three uh, can happen until uh, smart contract A drains out of ether or maybe the transaction gets reverted. Here we see the code example of uh, the same thing that we just saw earlier in the previous slide. Uh, here, the attacker has a start attack function that calls the donate function of the vulnerable contract. Here, the donate gets the address as a parameter and mm, sends some specific amount of ether to this address. And then the unnamed payable function of the attacker, which is uh, the fallback function, uh, is going to again call the donate function. And this happens again over and over until the vulnerable function can drain out of any ether. To detect the vulnerabilities, we generally you can use uh, either of these two approaches. Uh, we can either do static analysis or dynamic analysis. In the static analysis, we an analyze the source code of the program or the smart contracts without actually executing them. And on the other hand, on the dynamic analysis, we, we are interested in the runtime behavior of, on the, of an execution so that we understand if it is a good or bad kind of behavior. Because in the static analysis, we, we, we don't execute the program, we require no test case. So it's a more convenient way uh, to detect the vulnerabilities. But it doesn't mean that it's the more most accurate way because we don't actually execute them. We may have false positives and we may flag for spurious errors. Uh, on the other hand, the dynamic analysis requires good test cases to execute. And these are hard to generate and uh, 
to, to handle. And uh, because we have uh, the, the real-time behavior, the runtime behavior of an execution, it can be more precise and more precise on uh, detecting the errors or vulnerabilities. We present the Dynamit, which is a framework to detect the vulnerabilities on the smart contracts on the blockchain based on solely and only their dynamic behavior. We, uh, in Dynamit, by using Dynamit, we don't really need to have the source code of the program. And because we only rely on the behavior of the smart contracts. And these, the behavior of the smart contracts is actually uh, retrieved by observing the transactions to and from these smart contracts. Uh, since the transactions have some metadata and trace, we can uh, already observe these traces and metadata of the transactions. In the left hand, in the right hand side, you can see the, mm, the transaction receipt of a particular transaction in Ethereum. And uh, because Ethereum network is, is a public network, it's um, easily, fairly easily retrievable. Uh, the diagram of the framework uh, of our framework is presented here. We have two main components. We have the monitor and we have the detector. The monitor is actually a Node.js app that connects to the Ethereum network using the Web3.js library. It connects to the Ethereum and probes, uh, to, probes the smart contracts and transactions until it receives the, uh, the intended information or subscribes to blockchain events until it gets, to, and gets the information from the blockchain. After collecting these data, and uh, which are actually traces and metadata of the transactions, it sends them to the detector. The detector, uh, but it does this uh, in an on offline fashion rather than off online, uh, which means that it, the, the monitor sends them in bulk. Uh, our detector is actually a machine learning model that pre-processes this information, turns them into some features, and then trains on them to learn the, the patterns in these uh, errors or uh, uh, vulnerabilities or the behavior of the transactions, and then tries to uh, classify the transactions as benign or uh, malicious. Our detector, extra, uh, the, det the extracted features that we use in our detector uh, consists of the gas usage or the gas of the transaction, the transaction destination, uh, ether balance uh, difference, and the transaction source ether balance difference. Uh, we also use the average call stack depth, which, which is retrieved from the transaction trace itself. And uh, in the, uh, as I said earlier, the detector is actually, uh, the most important part of the detector is the machine learning classifier that we use to classify the, the, the collected data, the collected transaction metadata as benign or uh, malicious. Uh, we have used random forest, naive base, logistic regression, k nearest neighbors, support vector machines, and neural network as our classifiers, and we have collected some results about each of them to analyze the performance. To, uh, to run the experiments and see how our, our platform, work, our framework works, uh, we have uh, collected 13 robust service contracts that are robust to um, the vulnerability, the reentrancy vulnerability, and they cannot be exploited using vulnerability, uh, the reentrancy vulnerability. And then we have uh, 12 vulnerable uh, smart contracts that can be exploited by exploiting their uh, reentrancy vulnerability. And then we have uh, other benign and malicious user contracts that use the service of these service contracts. Together, um, we have created 25, uh, we pair these user and service contracts together and we create 25 transactions. 
which happen to be both malicious and benign transactions. But 25 transactions are not enough, um, will not generate enough data for our detector. So we also uh, try to uh, use fuzzing techniques and we actually created one fuzzing service contract and one fuzzing user contract. And this uh, pair tries to create random transactions and these random transactions can also can be both malicious and benign transactions. We, we use the fuzzing contracts to create 80 uh, random fuzzing uh, transactions. So, Together, we have uh, 105 transactions, which are quite balanced and have almost half of these transactions are benign transaction and the other half is malicious. And then we train our models with them. Uh, in the results section, as you see, we have uh, the highest accuracy belongs to a random forest model with more than 94% of accuracy in detecting malicious transaction from the benign transactions. The closest performing model is our neural network classifier and then the logistic regression model. But the neural network is actually performing better since, as you see, the F1 score and the recall measurements uh, measures are also uh, a bit closer together com compared to the uh, logistic regression model. Uh, and when we uh, take a look at the FPR and FNR, which are actually the rate of false positives and rate of false negatives, uh, these are um, which show the number of um, transactions, um, the, the FPR shows the number of transactions that are uh, falsely um, flagged as uh, positive and then false negative rate shows the, num uh, the rate of transactions that are falsely flagged as uh, uh, benign transactions. Uh, as you see here, the random forest model uh, performs quite well since it is balanced and the, um, the rate of FPR and FNR is quite close. Uh, compared to other models, the neural network uh, and SVM and actually any other model uh, except a random forest is, perform is not performing well uh, since as you see here for the neural network, the FP FNR rate is more than twice the FPR. And it shows that we have, uh, we actually, the, the model actually classifies a lot of, uh, a lot of mal malicious transactions as benign. And this is not good. This is in most cases, what we really don't desire. So uh, random, in, in conclusion, we can say that random for us, uh, not only it performs well uh, on having a high accuracy in detecting the uh, malicious transactions, it also performs well on uh, when it it cannot uh, detect these, uh, the, do, do it correctly. It performs well on not detecting the, the malicious transactions as vulnerable or uh, malicious transactions as vulnerable or benign as benign. In conclusion, we could uh, say that we could detect the vulnerabilities only by observing the behavior. And when we do this, we could, ex uh, we could uh, achieve 94% of accuracy with our random forest model in the detector. And as we saw earlier, uh, our, we presented uh, the, the, the dynamic framework, which consists of our monitor and the detector. The detector model consisted of our random forest model, which had the highest possible accuracy with uh, the collected data. Thank you for your attention.